What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with trigonometry with right angles, another word problem. So you are standing on top of a cliff and notice a car below at an angle of depression of 80 degrees and that car is driving away from the mountain at 57 kilometers per hour. Three minutes later, you see the same car at an angle of depression of six degrees. How high is the cliff in meters? So this is a pretty cool question. Lots of things going on here, lots of components that you have to put together. As usual, let's try to draw a diagram with what is happening here. So let's say that this is the mountain here. So you're standing right there. This is the road. And what's happening is you notice a car, let's say the car is like here, at an angle of depression of 80 degrees. So remember, an angle of depression and an angle of elevation, it's always in reference to the horizontal line, right? So this would be the angle of elevation, and then a line going down in reference to the horizontal line, that there would be an angle of depression. So that means that relative to this horizontal line here, right? If you're looking at this car, which is here, at an angle of depression of 80 degrees, that means that this here is the 80 degrees. Okay, now with the Z pattern, because the road is horizontal, and then this is a horizontal line here that we drew for reference, both of those are parallel. So with the Z pattern, that also means that this here is 80 degrees. Okay, and that's gonna be important later on in the question. Okay, so this here is the line of sight to the car, uh, you're standing here at the top of the cliff, the car is here at an angle of depression of 80 degrees, which means by the Z pattern, this is also 80 degrees, right? This angle, this angle are the same. So what I'm gonna do is actually erase this for now. And what's happening is this car is driving away from the mountain at 57 kilometers per hour. And then what it says is three minutes later, you see the same car, but at an angle of depression of six degrees. And that makes sense because if the mountain's here, the car is driving away from the mountain. So it's gonna end up, let's say somewhere like right here. Well, notice that that angle of depression gets smaller. So if we draw the new line of sight to um, where that car is right there. Try to draw a straight line here. That's pretty good. So, um, ignoring this part here, so the new angle of depression here is six degrees, right? This, this is the new line of sight here. That is six degrees. This here before was 80, now it is six. The angle of depression is smaller and that makes sense because the car is driving away from the mountain. If it was driving towards the mountain, right, then the angle of depression would get larger. But because it's driving away, the angle of depression got smaller. Uh, and again, by the Z pattern, this angle, because this is parallel to this line to the road, this angle and this angle here, they are the same like that. Okay, so we have our diagram labeled here. Now notice that we can actually figure out what this distance is here because we're told the speed of the car, right? The speed of the car is equal to 57 kilometers per hour. And we're told the time from here to here. We're told that three minutes later, the car ended up from here to here in three minutes. So the time that we are dealing with is three minutes. And because we have the speed of the car and then the time that it drove, we could figure out what this distance is here. We could call that maybe X. Um, you know what, I'm not gonna actually call it anything for now. I'm just gonna figure out what that distance is and then we'll just plug in that distance because eventually we're gonna have to need a variable here. So I'll probably label that as X right there. And ultimately what we're solving for is how high the cliff is, right? We're solving for the distance from here to here. We're solving for this H value. Okay, but we're gonna have to get some other parameters in the diagram in terms of the distance. 
in order to solve for this h. As of this point on the diagram, all the information on the diagram, we don't have enough information to solve for that h value yet. So again, I'm going to solve for this distance here first. Now, we know that in general, distance is equal to what? Distance is equal to speed times time. Right, the speed at which a car is driving times the amount of time that it drove. Distance is equal to speed times time. Well, we have the speed, we have the time, but what's the problem here? Well, they're in different units because notice that the speed, it's 57 kilometers per hour right here. But then this time here is in minutes, right? And so this um, unit of minutes and this unit of time hours, those are not equivalent. And so we can't multiply these like that. Either we have to change this speed to be in terms of kilometers per minute, and then we can multiply it by three minutes, or we have to change this minutes to be in terms of hours, and then we can multiply whatever that value is by this kilometers per hour. And I recommend um, converting the minutes to hours, right? So we got three minutes, we have to convert it to hours. Now there are, there's what? One hour per 60 minutes. Okay, and then these minutes would cancel out. So basically we'd end up with three over 60 hours or 1 20th of an hour like that. We just took the three, divided it by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, so three minutes is the exact same thing as 1 20th of an hour. Okay, and so now we could take that and plug it in this bracket instead. So we would have 57 times 1 over 20 like that. And when you take 57 multiplied by 1 over 20 or 57 divided by 20, you'd end up with 2.85 kilometers like this, right? So this distance here from here to here ended up being 2.85 kilometers. Okay, if the car is driving 57 kilometers in one hour, then in three minutes or 1 20th of an hour, it's going to drive 2.85 Kilometers. Now, because they're asking how high this cliff is in meters, notice here, this is in meters. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this kilometers, 2.85 kilometers, and I'm going to convert it to meters. Now, we know that there's, what, 1,000 meters per kilometer. So then notice these kilometers are cancel out. 2.85 times 1,000 gives us 2,850 meters we're left with that unit right there okay so instead of kilometers here this distance 2.85 kilometers i'm going to rewrite that distance as 2850 meters like that and now we have enough information to solve for this um, for this h value the question is how do we do it well, this is actually going to be one of those questions where we're going to have to create um, two equations because notice that we have two right angle triangles. We got this triangle here. We also have this triangle here. Okay, and we're going to have to use both of those triangles to create two equations. Uh, there is another way to do it as well. You can use this middle triangle, which is a non right angle triangle, and then what you could do is you could find this angle, then this angle, and then you could use sine law to find this side. But right now in the course, we haven't covered sine law yet. We're going to cover that in the next unit. So we're only going to be using tools that we've learned so far. And that's the tools of a right angle triangle. So either using Pythagoras theorem or using the sine, cos, and tan ratios. Okay, we haven't learned the tools for how to deal with a non-right angle triangle. So I'm not gonna be using the sine law. That's gonna be something that's covered in the next unit. Okay, now 
notice here, we don't have really have an expression for this distance. We know that from here to here is 2,850, but we don't have anything here labeled. And so what we can do is we can actually just bring in another variable and call it x. Okay, so x is gonna represent the distance from the base of the cliff to where the car initially was, right? So that distance there is gonna be x. And then once we have that labeled as x, what we can do is we can actually draw uh, where should I draw this? Yeah, let's draw it right here. We can draw both of these triangles that we have. So I'm going to draw this triangle here first. So we have this h value, we have this x value, this here ends up being 80 degrees like that. So we got one triangle there and then we have this other larger right angle triangle. So if I draw that triangle, notice that both of them have this side h that's common to them so this is also going to be h but what's this side going to be well it's going to be x plus 2850 and then we know that this angle here is going to be six degrees like that so we got these two right angle triangles and what we can do with these two right angle triangles is create two equations um, and then we'll have two equations, two unknowns, the h and x, and we can solve for those with substitution or elimination. Okay, so from here, I don't think we need anything else. Hopefully this diagram made sense to you. And then from this diagram, we were able to extract those two triangles right there. Okay, and ultimately what we're solving for is the h value, how high the cliff is in meters. So let's create some equations here. So notice that uh, you know what, I'll just create them at the bottom of each of these. So notice that we're dealing with this angle here. Well, notice this side is the adjacent side, right? Because the side that's opposite or across the 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse. So the other side that's attached to the angle is the adjacent side. This side here is the opposite side. Adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. We're not going to be dealing with the hypotenuse in this case. Okay, we only have expressions for the adjacent and the opposite but it does help sometimes to just label the hypotenuse so you know what the other sides are gonna be. And so which ratio deals with the adjacent and the opposite? The tan ratio. So we can say 10 of 80 right here is equal to the opposite, which is a, uh, h, the height, over the adjacent, which is that x value right there. And then same thing here, if we're using this angle as the reference, this here is the adjacent side, this here is the opposite side. So we can go 10 of 6 uh, equals the opposite over the adjacent like that, which is that entire expression like that. Um, and so now notice that we got two equations and two unknowns, the h and x as I mentioned before. So we could do substitution or elimination to solve for them. What I'm gonna do here, I feel like what's easiest is to put this over one, put this over one and cross multiply and get an expression for h for both of these. So notice one times h would give us just h and then we'll have 10 of 80 times the x value like that. Let's split these up here. Okay, and then over here, cross multiplying one times h is h as well. Then we'll have 10 of six, and then we'll have x plus 2,850. That goes in brackets like that, right? You're multiplying by that entire expression in the denominator, so make sure you put that in brackets. And so from here, notice that uh, we got two expressions for h, so we could just make both of them equal. Or if you think about it, we're doing substitution, right? We got h is equal to this expression, so we could plug in this expression for this h value, right? This goes right here. And so when we do that, let me write that over here. So we'll have 10 of 80 uh, x equals 10 of 6, and then we'll have the x plus 2,850. And now notice that at this point, what is happening is we have an equation in terms of only one variable to solve for, in terms of the x value to solve for. Right here, we had an equation in terms of h and x, so we couldn't really solve for anything here. 
H and X couldn't really solve for anything there. But once we combine them, we now have an equation in terms of one variable to solve for only that X value. And when you solve this, when you follow these steps here, all I did was for the tan 80, the tan 6, I put in these decimal values here. And then what you can do is you can distribute that decimal inside the bracket. You end up with this. Then notice that we have like terms with these X values. So I brought this over 5.67 minus 0.105. We end up with this 5.565X. We got the 299.25 here. Divide both sides by what's in front of the X to get the X by itself. And we end up with an X value of 53.5. 77. So that represents the x value, which remember was the distance from the base of the cliff to where the car was initially. But remember, we're not solving for x, okay? That's just a means to an end in order to get what we're ultimately solving for, which is the height of the cliff. But now, because we have this x value, we can actually take this x value, we could plug it in here, or we could plug it in there. Doesn't matter which one, you should get the same, um, H value, there might be slight differences depending on which one you plug it in because we did some rounding over here, but nevertheless, they should be fairly close. And so I feel like it's easier to just plug it in with this one because that X is just by itself. So we'll have 1080 times this X value that we just saw for 53.77. And when you do that, you'd end up with 304.95 meters like that. Okay, so that ends up being the final answer to this question, that is the height of the cliff.